Hey, my name is Jack, and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today, we are going to be talking about Batman 89. This is my movie review for Batman 89. It is the Tim Burton, Michael Keaton Batman film that we are talking about. Um, not that you can really get Batman 89 mixed up with any other film, because of how good it really is. Tim Burton came to the screen, came to WB's attention after doing Beetlejuice, and he made this Batman film. And everyone wanted it to be dark, brooding. They didn't want the Adam West classics, you know, the, the, the campy, lighted up Batman. They wanted a dark, heartfelt Batman. So, what Tim Burton did was he cast Michael Keaton, which was massive backlash back in the 80s, I, uh, when, when, of course, this was announced that it would be happening. But but they pulled it off. To people surprised they released the teaser trailer very quickly, showed that the, the, this film is... A dark, brooding Batman film with the cast of Michael Keaton's Batman. The way the suit looked, the way Gotham looked was really good back then. I've been watching interviews of, of the 80s, 80 interviews and stuff that have been reposted, refound and posted here on YouTube as of recently. Because I love looking at the behind the scene features and stuff on movies. As that's my, that's what I do in my casual time. But here, I want to I wanna set some premise here. For the for the, for the for the film, so the movie basically is about a Batman that that knows how to be Batman. He's he's been, he's been Batman for a while, but he doesn't really work with the GCPD. The GCPD, everyone in the city believe he doesn't exist. Paper, uh, this this paper guy, you know, Vicky Vale comes into it. She's trying to find out whether the bat does exist. She likes bats and she wants to know what happens. What what, what these villains, what these criminals of Gotham are saying. Because th there's got to be an explanation for these people being beaten up on rooftops. And who is this Batman they speak of? So, I think it's very much the, the GCPD, Gotham City, and the criminals realising that there is this other force out there. Uh, that, that, that will stop the evil. Because the GCPD is so corrupt at this point that it can't. One of the main police characters within the, within the film is a corrupt officer. And I really do love, I really do love that movie, uh, because it shows the police corrup corruption, and it shows what Batman can do to stop it. So moving on forward from that point, um, the one thing I really did did enjoy with this film was um, Jack Nicholson's portrayal as the Joker. I think he did a fantastic job. I did like the fact they gave Joker a name, which was the first thing, first ever time they'd ever did that. Of course, now you have the Joker 2019 movie that's also given Joker a name, but that's not necessarily, you know, the Joker apparently. But Jack Nicholson's Joker was, of course, called Jack Napier, and <sighs> Nicholson really pulls it off. He pulls off how to play Jack Napier in one scene, and then Jack. Than the Joker in another, because there's the point where he falls into the acid. He's getting plastic surgery. Second he unravels his face, and it's revealed that he's this. He's, he's been transformed, and he's, he's somebody new. Nicholson takes that role. He grasps at it, and he comes out bursting with laughter. He makes himself sound crazy, stupid, and it, it, the character changes to the point where you believe the actor's changed because it is that good of a portrayal. Jack Napier was a good portrayal, but the manifesting himself from Jack Napier, a normal criminal, to this madman who wants revenge on the Batman, who wants to take this this Batman down, who, who wants to rule Gotham, he wants to hurt people, he wants to kill people with his toxins, but he doesn't find it killing, he just finds it providing products that actually accidentally kill people. It, it, it's one. It's one. It's a sort of massive thing within the film, because I don't kill people. I supply them with the stuff that kills them, but I don't kill people. And I think that's kind of the the, the the line there that Tim Burton put was. Joker is a madman. He cannot see when he kills people. He like if he shoots somebody, he's killed someone. No, I just held the gun and pulled the trigger. The gun actually, you know, the bullet killed him. He's that sort of person, I think, in this film. He has an answer for everything. He's very sm uh, snarky, and I think that is what 
what, what the movie needed. But it did it so well, in fact, that, that I loved, I loved this film. <laughs> the thing with Jack Nicholson's portrayal of Jack Napier, this is why I'm going back to Napier, is we find out that he killed Bruce Wayne's parents in this. So, there's a scene at the end of the movie that, that, that is fantastic. It's where Jack sits down and he goes, he's, 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 he, Jojo, the Batman and Joker in this bell tower. And Joker goes, you made me. And then Batman replies, you made me first. Because Batman made, jo made Jack Napier into the Joker. He turned him into the Joker by putting him in that acid. And the, the, the other thing is that, you know, Napier uh, created Batman by killing Bruce's parents. So that's the one thing Burden does, which no other Batman film's done, is he sort of brings it around in full circle. He goes, well, if Joker made Batman and then Batman made the Joker, it makes him on an even playing field. And it just, for me, it makes sense why the Joker would have such a, would be so fascinated by the Batman, why he'd have such a fixation on him. Of course, this was a long-lived uh, story that that I could have seen going forward when I first watched it the first time. I remember I was like six or seven, and I thought, this is cool, because I watched the animated show. I'd been watching the animated... I bought these box sets of the animated series. I've been watching them. I've watched The Dark Knight. I loved Heath Ledger's performance, but Jack and Nicholson, wow. I then rewatched Heath Ledger's and found out, you know, actually he portrayed it a bit better because he did a lot more prep work and... The, the, you know, the Joker was the Joker throughout the entire film, so... But the one thing I loved about it, the one thing that I thought was... <sighs> so breathtaking was the fact that... Jack Nicholson... Uh, worked... On bringing Joker out. I've, I've seen clips of Mark Hamill manifest into the Joker. When he portrays him in animated movies, animated shows, the, the, the Arkham games... Jack and Nicholson, he manifested him within the film. And the one thing Tim Burton also does very cleverly is he doesn't give us Bruce Wayne's parents' death. We believe that's what's happening in the beginning of the film. Any fan of the comics would believe that that is what is happening at the beginning of that film, but no. Tim Burton does it in a way that shows this is what you know the origin story. Of Bruce Wayne. You know his parents are killed. This is how it really went down. But there was no shooting. There was no killing. Why is that? And he already shows in like the first six minutes. That the Batman is feared. They don't believe in him. Which is crazy to think they don't believe in the Batman. When half of Gotham City's criminals. Fear him. So that's one thing that Tim Burton does really well. I think Michael Keaton does an amazing job as Batman. I I mean, I really couldn't pick anyone better for the role. And the fact he's returning for The Flash, and it's in such high demand he does return, now that is something that I'm so looking forward to seeing him return uh, in, in The Flash 2022. I'll definitely be having, you know, the trailer reactions pumping out at that point. I'm very much excited to see what happens with this The Flash film. Of course, I believe it's releasing in 2022, and The Batman is releasing in 2022 of March. So, there's a lot of stuff to cover here on the channel within the new movie segments, but of course, at the moment, I'm working on my classic reviews. I'm doing my trailer reactions, doing my new movie reviews once I see a film that I particularly want to go and see, because I'm not going to go out of my way and watch a film that I don't want to watch. The only reason why I watched Out of Death, which was never a film that I thought... Oh, I could. Well, I, you know, I quite like that film. I, you know, I watched it because it was a Bruce Willis film, and I and I saw it, and I thought this would be an interesting to do my first video on. And I mean, it was a very interesting video. So if you guys haven't seen that, definitely click on the uh, channel icon, go to my channel, hit the subscribe button as well, give this video a like, and uh, definitely go check out that review that I did. If you guys uh, want, it does say spoiler review, but. <laughs> Most of the stuff I talk about is within the trailers. I just put a spoiler warning on there, just so you know. That's that's what's on there. Uh, but with that being said, I will definitely see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.